Well, my name is Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I have no idea what people what people might be interested in what I have to say, but I'm excited to be here speaking with Adobe Summit. What do I do? I do a lot of things. I'm uh, Chief Creative Officer at Mountain, one of the founders of Maximum Effort Marketing and Productions. I'm an actor, I'm a philanthropist, I'm a dad, I'm a pal. I guess that about sums it up. <laughs> I am not the world's foremost expert on sarcasm, but I would say that I, I've leaned quite heavily on self-deprecation. I think growing up in Canada, I learned to uh, laugh at myself first and foremost. I think, you know, our ability to laugh at ourselves is, uh, is a serious gift. Let me show you how to make it. I always feel at least a little bit like an outsider in the marketing space and, and the brand space and, and you know sometimes that perspective can be can be valuable. I'm very good at failing and from failing I've really sort of I think learned more than I could ever possibly imagine. You could fill a thousand gymnasiums with things I've learned from failing. So as somebody who's you know does all right in some other industries, why would I choose to work in, in marketing and advertising? I genuinely love marketing. I genuinely love storytelling like that. I love the fact that we can, you know, jump into conversations and, and tell a wide variety of stories. For me and for my company at Maximum Effort, there's more ideas than there are places to tell those stories. So uh, marketing really allows us an opportunity, like a sort of a super highway to kind of get that done. Ads in marketing have so much more in common with film, television, creation, and novels, all of those things, and I think people give it credit for. Um, it's all storytelling at the end of the day. And for me, like a key tenet in communication and in, certainly in marketing and storytelling is, is this idea that necessity is the mother of invention, and you know that that is something that I like to bring to everything I do in terms of storytelling. I found like that that the the death of creativity usually happens because there's either too much time or too much money or both. When your back's against the wall, it forces you to think outside the box and think in more creative ways and how to replace spectacle with character. Just through show business, I've noticed that spectacle sort of only takes you so far. Character is what you remember. Character is what you revisit. Character is what keeps you coming back. But I found that having a personal touch, both on the internet, but also outside of that, access and accountability uh, are two things that have really been massively beneficial and two things, things that I just would never underestimate in terms of how I operate my business and my life. Certainly with the internet, it's, uh, I think it's just about probably 98% listening and then, you know, 2% jumping in the often murky, hot, boiling water of it. You know, engagement is where it's at. You want to engage with with, with folks and you want to feel like you're listening to them and that hopefully they're listening to you. This idea that we create marketing six months in advance or a year in advance and all these kinds of antiquated ideas, you know, to me are, are, are just that. It's, it's really about moving at the speed that people are moving. There's a tremendous amount of red tape in between brands and agencies and creative and you know, the, the, the sooner and more quickly and efficiently you can close that gap, the sort of the better chance you have at, at really, you know, having a, a conversation piece in the zeitgeist. And for me, the, the, the huge achievements have been the earned media. I mean, working on projects that, you know, come together extremely quickly and, uh, and efficiently and, and, you know, drop into an existing conversation. I do believe that if you if marketers are able to access in a very real way and drop into a current conversation, then their brand can sometimes become the conversation. And, and that is you know, the biggest win of all, I think, in that world. We somehow, you know, over the years, sort of lost this idea that ads are meant to be fun. You know, ads can be fun. <laughs> and they don't have to be extremely expensive and they don't have to be maudlin. And people know they're being marketed to. Um, so for us, it was a little bit about dropping that artifice and leaning into that idea that, you know, basically, you know, tipping our, our, our hand that way, which is, you know, saying, yes, we are marketing right now. This is marketing. And when you do that, I think it feels a lot more authentic. And I feel that your consumer and audience are much more likely to share that story and be the authors of whatever that brand's success might be. Um, 
because people love authorship. And everybody out there is a media company. I mean, everybody has a Snapchat, a Facebook, a TikTok, a, you know, a Twitter, a Instagram. So they are selective and careful about what they choose to amplify. And if, and if you could tell a story that, you know, doesn't pander to them or condescend, you know, they're, they're much more likely to share that story. I, I always kind of lean more on the sort of old school mad men aspect of things. I mean, I always look at creative first, you know, I always feel like that's kind of a stopgap and sort of covers all of your bases, regardless of, you know, your target, so to speak. So how do I define success at the end of the day? Um, anything that kind of capitalizes on a conversation, I always find quite successful. I personally find speed very successful. If we can, if we can ideate something and be rolling cameras within 12 to 24 hours, I usually, I think that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. I'm not saying that that is how everyone should operate. That is, those are special circumstances, but uh, where speed counts like that. But, um, you know, those are, those are situations that I, I feel extremely proud of. The conversations and culture move so fast you know, it can be really hard to keep up. So we don't we don't typically tell stories that like we're we're sort of planning ahead, you know, three or four months in advance of something. But we do have, you know, set pieces that we think about. Like we did an ad for Match.com, which was um, we had sort of cooking for a while. Twenty twenty was just an absolute shit show of a year, and we thought it was very funny if you know Match was you know entering the cultural conversation in a way that was slightly you know. Fresh, which is, you know, Satan is looking to date somebody and finds and meets his perfect match, and that perfect match happens to be the anthropomorphized version of 2020. You know, that that was a situation where we're thinking sort of much further in advance. It also required a little bit more production value and, you know, prosthetics and all sorts of things that had to happen. But, but everything else is like, sometimes it's just so spur of the moment. Sometimes it just comes from, you know, listening. I mean, sometimes it's as simple as Dave Foley you know, tweeting out, uh, hey, Ryan, I love your ads for Mint Mobile. Can I be in one one day? And then, then us literally just thinking, how fast can we get Dave Foley on camera? Turns out it can be six hours later. So I love being on an airplane because, you know, sometimes I will elect to not activate Wi-Fi, at which point it's, uh, it's when I have all my good ideas. When I'm driving my kids to school in the morning, I have a lot of great ideas when they're not little human power drills in my ear. I, uh, I love that time. I love that time. That time is so precious. Like going for a walk without a phone is a beautiful thing to me because that's when inspiration strikes. So it took me a long time to figure that out, I guess, because I'm a little bit dumb. But it really took me a while to figure out, like, oh, when I sort of, like, unplug, I'm actually weirdly more sort of productive when my mind is allowed to kind of wander I think of stories I think of like campaigns I'm oftentimes like I love the exercise of just throwing any brand up on a whiteboard and sort of seeing what you can come up with but I think everybody should be taking risks in advertising I mean ads and marketing it's just diet storytelling you know it's not something that's meant to be in the Smithsonian we're just having fun with it. You, you, you swing and you miss sometimes, and other times you swing and you hit a grand slam. It's just, uh, I'm always a huge fan of brands that take huge risks, you know, and think outside the box and do things a little bit differently than the status quo. So.